Hey guys, what is up? It is the Fast Break Report here bringing you guys another vlog. This is a quick one. Uh, you know, normally, I, I'm there's more and more stuff happening around the NBA the more that the playing tournament happens and the more that the NBA playoffs happen. Things are going to change throughout the, the next month or so here, um, especially with how teams perform during the playoffs, you know, who gets knocked out of the play-in, who actually makes it into the playoffs and all this other stuff. It's a very volatile time of year for NBA teams because it's like they don't, we're getting to the point now where they're really going to start deciding like, is this a, a team we want to keep together or is this a team that we want to blow up and just try again? Uh, and one of those teams uh, on the hot seat right now is the Golden State Warriors. The Golden State Warriors lost um, into the play in the, uh, last night against the Sacramento Kings. I picked the Kings to actually win. But the thing is, uh, there's a lot of conversation this morning about the Warriors being done. And I, I, that's all I've seen on YouTube today is that it's over for the Warriors. It's over for the Warriors. They're done. They're done. They're done. And honestly, I wouldn't say they're done. Um, so long as Steph Curry is on that team, they are going to continue to try to be competitive. And that's a big topic today. Everyone's saying like, how is, you know, uh, are they going to continue to build around Steph and Curry? Are they going to get rid of some guys? And I kind of just want to address that because it's funny that people are saying that, the, that this year, but their, their record was better than it was last year. Like they actually had a better record this year than they did last year. And so people are like Stephen A. Smith has called this season a failure, and I, I would kind of agree, but on the flip side, they played better than I expected them to. I, I'm just going to call it what it is, like with the whole Draymond Green situation and all this other stuff, the idea that they were 10 games above 500 with, I think, a 46-36 and 36 record is relatively impressive. Um, they're a team that I think we've all just grown accustomed to seeing in the playoffs, so when they don't make it, it's... Uh, a big shock to everybody, you know, they, they, I think in the last five years, they've missed the playoffs three times, and, you know, that's, that's a big deal, you know, especially if you're a fan of Steph Curry, granted, they won a ring in 2022, so it's not like they're very far removed from winning a ring, but th I think the, the trio of Draymond Green, Clay Thompson, and Steph Curry is officially done, um, you know, Steph, I can't believe this. Clay Thompson played 31 minutes last night for the Golden State Warriors and scored zero points. He had the same amount of points that I had in that Golden State Warriors game. Okay. He played 31 minutes and scored zero. Now it's very obvious. Clay Thompson is going to be an unrestricted free agent. And I'm going to be honest, if he's going to come back to Golden State, it's going to be for maybe 20 million a year. It's not going to be for the 43 million a year that he's making right now currently. And there's a lot of things on this team that I really think need to be changed as well. You know, against uh, like uh, teams with a five like a, a 500 or better record, like I think they said on uh, ESPN today that the Warriors are like have a, like a four and 19 record against teams that are really really good. Like they've lost a like every time they play a competitive team, they get their ass kicked. Like their their record is four and 19 against teams above 500. Don't quote me on that, but. I heard that today on ESPN, I think from Stephen A. Smith, and if that's true, then there's like some serious, like, there's some serious changes that need to happen in Golden State, and I, I think they're gonna happen. You know, one of the things that um, Mad Dog brought up, I don't like to quote him on much, but it's the idea that they don't have any cap space. Um, the Golden State Warriors have absolutely no cap space to sign a big free agent, but if they move some of those contracts around, they might be able to. Um, you know, this is a team that I feel like should be hunting for draft picks at this point. Stephen Curry, I think is 36, 37 years old. Like he's approaching 40 and it's going to happen a lot quicker than people think. But Steph Curry still has like, I'd say a couple good years left in him. And if you could put something around him to bring that team back to championship contention, I, I think you should do it. You know, like uh, Steph Curry is still one of the best point guards. He's still like, actually he's statistically is the best point guard in the NBA. If you combine all their stats together, but it's just the idea. Stephen Curry is still a guy that can go out and get you, you know, 25 or better a game. And he's still a guy that's still shooting very efficiently. He's still one of the best players in the league. I think he's still one of the top 10 players in the NBA. So it's not like they got to rip it down, but they really do need to retool. Um, I think Andrew Wiggins needs to go. Um, Chris Paul has another, he has a player option for $30 million that I'm, I guarantee they're going to cut him because he's only, uh, partially guaranteed at that point. Like his, his next player option for this upcoming year is $30 million, but it's only partially guaranteed. So if they cut him, they can save themselves $15 million. 
But the problem with the, the, the Golden State Warriors is like they've missed on, on the James Wiseman draft pick that wasn't that wasn't good for them. But they got Brandon Podzeminski still. They brought back Gary Payton the second, even though Gary Payton the second's getting a little older. Um, like Jonathan Kaminga finally looks like he's a, a good NBA player. Like I've been waiting for this dude to break out for a long time, and finally Jonathan Kaminga this year like looks like a, a viable basketball player. It looks like a draft pick they actually hit on. Because for a while I was like, bro, like I don't think he's ever going to be any better than he is now, and he's been proving me wrong this year. Because I, I in the beginning of the year I was like, I'm not a fan of Jonathan Kaminga. Like he's not a guy I'd want the Pacers to trade for. And sure enough, you know, since the, like the All Star break, the dude's been balling. So I gotta, I gotta give, you know, uh, I gotta give him his flowers, Jonathan Kaminga, because for a while I was not. For a while I was like, bro, this, I, I thought he sucked. I thought he was incredibly overrated, and now he's he's proving me wrong. So I, I do think Draymond Green is going to continue to be in Golden State, um, but I think he's on a very, very short leash. I'm just gonna call that what it is. Um, I, Curry's fine. Uh, Moses Moody's fine. Podzeminski's fine, like all their young guys should be fine, but it's just a matter of where are they going to get a third star, you know, because like this is a team that needs three stars, like who's going to trade for Andrew Wiggins, you know what I'm saying, like that's the other thing, it's like you, you're stuck on Andrew Wiggins at this point, and I feel like the Warriors are at a point where they have to, they're going to have to cut Chris Paul, They're gonna, if Klay Thompson wants to come back, it's going to have to be sig- for significantly less than whatever he's making now, probably like I said in the 20 million dollar range, but if you're the Warriors, it's like even if you bring back Klay Thompson, right, and you cut Chris Paul, I, this team is still not that good. You know what I'm saying? Like, they, they'll be a, a competitive basketball team. You know what I'm saying? They're not going to fucking tank. Not not so long as Steph Curry's there. But this is a team that really needs to retool. They, I, I feel like Andrew Wiggins could be gone, Chris Paul could be gone, and Klay Thompson could be gone. Now, if they can find a way to replace them, that would be a huge deal. Like, if they could get DeMar DeRozan in free agency, I understand he's 34 going on 35, or maybe he's 35 already, but DeMar DeRozan has been very good, and I, I honestly don't think he's going to re-sign with, with Chicago, no matter how much they try to convince him Lonzo Ball is coming back. I just think DeMar DeRozan maybe wants a shot to win, and playing with Steph Curry gives you a great ability to do that, and DeMar DeRozan's a guy that could go to Golden State on a cheaper contract and still play next to, um, you know, uh, Draymond Green and Steph, and really, he's very similar to Andrew Wiggins in the sense that I I would argue DeMar DeRozan's better than Andrew Wiggins, that's, I mean, I don't know if there's going to be anybody who debates that, but I think DeMar DeRozan is better than Andrew Wiggins, and if you could maybe trade Andrew Wiggins for some salary cap filler and maybe bring in DeMar DeRozan on a small deal, they're a team that that could make another really deep run. Um, DeMar DeRozan's a guy who who can kill it from mid-range, he's a great clutch player, I think he'd fit very well next to Steph and Draymond, considering uh, Steph shoots threes and Draymond, Draymond's gotten a lot better at shooting threes, I think He's shooting the three at a high clip this year. If I'm, if I'm, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure Draymond Green was shooting threes in like upwards of 40% this year. Uh, Draymond Green is, yeah, he's shooting 39% from three this year. Granted, he's played 52 games, but that's a career high almost. No, it is. It's a career high in three point percentage for Draymond Green. I mean, the best year he had shooting threes was in 2015, 2016 when they went on that fucking tear. Um, he shot 38% from three on uh, three, three, basically 3.2 attempts a game. Now he's shooting 39% on about two and a half attempts per game. So yes, the attempts are down, but still for Draymond Green, those are good numbers. So I don't know, man. You know what? It, it's The Warriors are in a messy situation and they got to find a way to free up some cap space if they really want to continue to remain competitive. The alternate alternative here is the idea that they trade Stephen Curry and just get as many draft picks as they can for him, but players with contracts like Stephen Curry are not easy to trade. Uh, you know, like, yeah, you could get a Trey Young. Um, odds are you're not going to get anything as good for Steph Curry. Like, when you trade away a guy like Steph Curry, you know, like or a Kevin Durant or somebody like that, you 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 usually don't get back what you're what you really want for them, like in in the immediate. Uh, future, but like maybe in the long term future you will. But I think Steph Curry e- could easily command three or four first round picks, even at the age that he is at now. I think, and I almost feel like that would be the smart move for the Golden State Warriors. But I, I don't know. Like we don't know what tricks they have up their sleeve. But everybody's saying that the Warriors are done. I don't think they're done. I think they're going to retool. I think they're going to find a way to move Andrew Wiggins. I think they're. I, I don't think they're going to bring back Clay Thompson. I just don't. 
Um, if they do, it'll be a, on a really cheap deal. And honestly, Clay Thompson just hasn't been the same player since his uh, Achilles injury and all the injuries that he's had in general. He's just not the same player anymore. And Draymond Green's a guy, he's making $72 million, but... You know, Draymond Green's a guy that he can't stay on the floor. He gets too many technical fouls and all this other stuff. And you can you saw it during the regular season that Steph Curry was starting to get frustrated with it. You know, there's only so many times you can tell a guy to, like, stop doing shit. And if he doesn't stop doing it, he's obviously never going to learn. So, I don't know, man. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. But the Warriors are definitely going to be an interesting team to watch this offseason. Being that, you know, for all we know, like, honestly... For all we know, if the Bucks lose in the first round and the idea that the the Warriors lost, okay, there's a chance that the 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 Bucks could be trading Damian Lillard or, you know, maybe Giannis decides he doesn't want to play in Milwaukee anymore if they if they lose in the first round of the Pacers. Like there's just a lot of volatility this time of year when it comes to rosters and it's it's gonna be. I have a feeling this off season you're gonna see a lot of names jumping around and going different places. Uh, you know, di- you know, same faces just in new places, so to speak. But uh, that's pretty much it. I- I'm curious to know what you guys think about this down below in the comment section below. Tell me what you guys think. Like helps me out. Subscribe if you guys want to see more. I'm the Fast Break Report, and I'm out of this motherfucker. Peace, guys.